Okay, so let's look at the path variable. So this is a very important variable, if not the most important variable to know how to manipulate and have an understanding of how it works. So let's just echo this variable out. So echo dollar path. So what it is, is a list of directory paths separated by colons and bash evaluates this from left to right. So let's just use a command like ls. So when we type in ls, what bash does is it goes through this list of directories and it looks for a match. So once it finds that match, it doesn't bother looking through the other directories. It will just execute in our case ls. So we can see where ls is using which. So if we just type in the which command in ls, we can see that ls is in slash user slash bin, which is this directory over here. Now we can make changes to this path variable and add directory paths to the end of it or to the beginning of it. And as you know that it's evaluated from left to right, anything that we add to the left of this path variable is evaluated first. So if we had a script called ls and we put it in a different directory, say for example, in a bin directory in your within your home directory, and we put that directory at the beginning of our path, what would happen is bash would find that first and execute that instead of this ls command, which is in slash user slash bin. So we can do that. So let's just create a directory. So right now I'm in my home directory and let's just make a directory and let's call it path test. And within path test, let's just create a script. So let's call it ls. And it looks like I don't have vim in this virtual machine. Okay, so now let's edit that script. So let's have a look. Path test is there. So vim path test. And we're going to call our script ls. And then insert. And let's just echo something out. So echo this is not the ls you were looking for. Okay, let's save and quit that. Okay, so now let's just add this directory to our users path. Now, this all depends on which files you actually have available. So there are a couple of files that we can do this in, and it all depends on what you have. And if you don't have any of these files, you can actually just create them. So what you're looking for is ls-a. You're looking for one of these dot files and it will be either dot bash underscore profile or just in this case dot profile. Now, if you had both dot bash underscore profile is sourced first, followed by dot profile. So in this case, all we need to do is edit our dot profile file. So vim dot profile and let's just go right to the bottom. So if you have a look at these if statements right at the bottom in this profile file, you can see that the path is actually being modified here. And what it's doing is it's looking to see if there's a bin directory in the current user's home directory. And if that exists, it basically adds that to the beginning of your path variable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add our path test directory in much the same way as it's done there. So path equals and within double quotes, what we're going to do is we're going to add our path test directory to the beginning of our path variable. So we're just going to type in dollar home to get us into our home directory forward slash path test and then a colon dollar path. So whatever the path variable is currently, we're going to glue that onto the end of this and overwrite our path variable with all of this. And once we're finished doing that, the next thing that you need to do, which is just a good habit, is to make sure that this path variable is exported. So you want to type export path. Now, in this particular case, it's not strictly necessary because the path variable has already been exported in one of the other startup files, which was sourced before this file gets sourced. But it doesn't hurt to export a variable that's already exported. So once that's all done, we're going to save and exit this and we're all done. So if we echo our path variable, you'll notice that nothing has changed yet. And that's because this file hasn't been sourced yet. Now, there are a number of ways that we can do this, but the foolproof way of doing this is to actually just log out and log back in, which can help you to avoid a number of different issues. In this particular case, as our dot profile file is one of the last files to be sourced, we should be okay to just source it. So 
I'm just going to use dot to source it, but you could use the keyword term, which is just source. In fact, let's just use source instead of dot. So source dot profile and hit enter. And now if we echo our path variable, you'll see that we have our new directory added to the beginning of it. And just before we continue, one thing that I forgot to do was to actually make that LS script that we wrote executable. So we just want to chmod u plus x path test ls. And now it's executable. If we type in ls, we get this is not the ls you were looking for. And if we type in which ls, you'll see exactly where that ls lives. So that's just one thing to watch out for when you edit your path variable. And that is if you're adding directories to the beginning of the path variable, if you have anything that has the same name as something further along that line, so a command like ls, then bash will run the first instance that it sees. So in this case, it probably would have been better for us to add our directory to the end of the path variable. And then if we wanted to run our version of ls, what we could have done is actually typed in the full path to it. So in this case, we can actually use the built-in ls command if we just reference it by its full path. So we could do slash usr slash bin slash ls. So if we tell bash exactly where the thing is that we want to run, it will run that. So let's modify our path again. So vim dot profile and let's just go to the end and let's just remove this and we can just remove this export as well. Okay, so let's save that and let's resource our dot profile file. So dot space dot profile. So this is the other way that you can source. You can just use the dot method, hit enter. And now if we echo our dollar path variable, you'll see that our directory is still there. And this is exactly what I was talking about previously. And that is because this variable exists already within our current environment and has not been reassigned or unset, it was added to our path variable anyway. If we resource our .profile file and echo dollar path, you'll see that that had absolutely no effect. So this is the reason why if you make any changes to your path variable, it is probably better to just log out and log back in. It's a lot easier. Alternatively, you could source all of the bash startup files in the correct sequence and you'd be fine. But why do that when you can just log out and log back in? So I'm just going to do that just to demonstrate this. So if I just log out my user. And let's just log in. And if we open up a terminal and this time echo our path variable, you'll see that that directory no longer exists here. So our path variable has been correctly updated. So up until now, what we've done is we have edited our own path variable for our specific user. But what if we wanted to make a system wide change to the path variable so that all users on the system would have this change? Well, the place where we would edit is actually if we just use vim, so vim slash etc slash profile, this is the file that is the system wide profile file. So let's just uh, try and edit this. And as you can see, it's in read only because you need to be root to be able to edit this file. So let's just correct that now by quitting. And let's just use sudo, enter in my password and just enter in my password correctly. There we go. And what you want to do is come on down to the end of this file. Let's just make our change to our path variable. So path, all caps, equals, open up your double quotes. And this time we're going to add a directory to the end of our path. So dollar path, colon, and let's just say our directory is in slash temp. So slash temp, slash, and let's just call it path test. And then just after that, make sure that the path variable is exported. So export path and we're done. So if we just write and quit this, those changes will take effect the next time we log in or the slash etc slash profile file is sourced. Or we could just log in as a different user just to demonstrate that this change is actually system wide and will apply to all users on the system. So if I just log in another user that's on the system, which is John Doe, 
and that needs to be root to be able to do that. So there we go. So if we echo the path variable here, we should expect to have our slash temp slash path test directory right at the end of it. So let's have a look and there it is. So let's just log out now. And we're back to the Linux Leech user on this system. And because Linux Leech has not logged out and logged back in, the path variable is not going to include that new directory that we added. So that's just one thing to bear in mind when you're editing your path variable, and that is make sure that you log out and log back in again. So that's how to make modifications to the path variable that are either system wide, so all users can take advantage of them, or just for your specific user. And those are the files that are involved on an Ubuntu system. So I've got a Fedora VM open as well. So let's just transition over to that. So let's just have a look at the files that are involved in doing exactly the same thing in Fedora, for example. So let's just ls-a. And you'll notice that Fedora doesn't use a dot profile file. Now there's nothing saying that we can't create our own, but instead what it uses is it uses the dot bash underscore profile file. Now there's no real difference apart from if you had both, this one gets loaded first, but it's not a big issue. And you'll see that the same stuff goes into either of these files. So if we just open up this bash underscore profile file, so by dot bash underscore profile, you'll see that what's contained is, is very similar, if not the same to what's in Ubuntu's dot profile file. So you can see here, it's seeing if this file exists and if it does, it sources it. So this is uh, get the aliases and functions is what the comment says here. And then as you can see, the path variable is being modified here. So what's happening is dollar home so the dot local slash bin directory in your home directory is added and the bin directory within your home directory is added to the end of the path variable and then the path variable is exported so there's no real difference there so let's have a look at the system profile file so if we just use vi again so slash etc slash profile so if we have a look in this file, what it says is if we just look at these comments, it says it's not a good idea to change this file unless you know what you're doing. It's much better to create a custom.sh shell script in slash etsy slash profile.d. Now that was the exact same directory that is sourced in Ubuntu's etsy slash profile file. So what it does is it goes into that directory and it sources any scripts that exist in there. So you could actually make your path variable changes in a totally separate script within that directory. And you can do that on Ubuntu as well, exactly the same. And if we come on down here, there's this function which is called pathmunge. And what this function does is it takes two arguments, the first of which is a path, and the second of which, which doesn't need to be present, is the keyword after. So what happens is if you give it a path to a directory and the keyword after, it will add that directory to the end of your path. If you don't give it the keyword after, it will add the directory that you give it to the beginning of your path variable. So if we just scroll down on through this and have a look where the path is manipulated, you'll see how that function works. So right here, this is added to the beginning of your path variable. And this one over here is added to the end of your path variable. And so is the next one down. And then if we just scroll down a little further, you'll see that the path variable gets exported here, along with a host of other variables. So let's just get out of this. So let's quit this. So that's basically brought us to the end of this video on the path variable in bash. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. Goodbye.